I never expected to hear my brother-in-law Dalton accuse me of neglecting a child I didn't know existed. This confrontation was the first crack in the facade of my seemingly peaceful life. Alara, we need to talk, Dalton said, his usually cheerful face now deadly serious. It's about the baby. What baby? I asked, thoroughly confused. Dalton looked shocked. Wait, are you actually denying abandoning your infant on my doorstep? What? No. I have no idea what you're talking about, I insisted. Had everyone gone mad? Dalton ran his hands through his hair in exasperation. I found a baby girl wrapped in blankets next to my front door three days ago. She came with a note, your handwriting, saying her name was Amelia and that you were unable to care for her anymore. My heart was pounding. A baby? With my handwritten note? This made no sense. Dalton, you know I don't have any children beside Marcus and Lily. I swear on my life, I did not abandon a baby at your home. Dalton searched my face, looking more bewildered by the second. Well, if you didn't, then who did? A tense silence descended between us. My mind was reeling. Who would do something so cruel, so calculated? A disturbing thought emerged. What if this wasn't just a cruel prank? What if this connected somehow to the unusual behavior I'd noticed from my husband Bennett recently? His emotional distance, secret phone calls, vague explanations about his late nights at the office. Could this be related? I had brushed aside my creeping doubts until now. But this incident felt like more than mere coincidence. Someone was trying to frame me. But for what purpose? Dalton's next words interrupted my spiraling thoughts. If you're telling the truth, we need to involve the police. This is serious. As much as I wanted to get authorities involved, something held me back. Call it intuition or paranoia, but I needed to do some investigating myself first. Let's hold off on that for now, I said slowly. I intend to get to the bottom of this myself. Dalton looked like he wanted to argue, but then nodded. Okay, but please keep me informed, Delara. Little Amelia deserves some answers. Trust me, I don't plan on letting this go until the truth comes out. With those ominous words, I left Dalton's house in a daze. As I drove home, a million anxious thoughts ran through my mind. Who had the audacity to use my identity? Why fabricate the existence of a baby? And most importantly, was Bennett hiding disturbing secrets behind his pillar of respectability? This mysterious false accusation felt like the tip of a sinister iceberg. But I was intent on dredging up the truth, no matter what damage it inflicted on my family in the process. I had a feeling things would only get messier from here, but I was determined to handle it on my own terms, confronting whoever was spinning this intricate web of lies. As I pulled into my driveway, a wave of foreboding washed over me. I didn't know it yet, but this first crack in my family's facade would soon shatter wide open, and the resulting debris would leave no relationship unscathed, least of all my own marriage. The drive back home gave me time to think. Who would have the cruel audacity to frame me for abandoning a baby? The more I considered possible suspects, the more my thoughts focused on one person, my husband, Bennett. His recent emotional distance and secrecy around his work made him seem like the prime suspect. I realized it was time I investigated whether he was truly the respectable man I believed I had married. As soon as I entered the house, I called out, Bennett, we need to talk. Now, he strolled into the kitchen, casual as ever. What's up, babe? I studied his expression. No guilt, no curiosity, just bland indifference. I decided to start testing the waters. Do you remember my brother-in-law Dalton and his wife Trinity? Bennett nodded absently as he scrolled through his phone. Red flag number one. Well, Dalton came to me with something deeply disturbing today. I paused, gauging his response. He claimed I left a baby girl on his doorstep with a note in my handwriting. Have you ever heard anything so bizarre? Bennett's head jerked up, eyes wide. Wait, what? A baby? Why would your brother make something like that up? He seemed rattled rather than merely confused. Red flag number two. I crossed my arms. Yes, that's exactly what I'd like to know. I was hoping you could help me get to the bottom of who would falsely use my identity. Bennett shook his head, avoiding my scrutinizing gaze. I have no idea what kind of game your family is playing, Alara. This is between you all. His evasion sparked my anger. Some sick, twisted person tried to frame me for abandoning an infant, Bennett. Don't you even care? He held up his hands defensively. Of course I care, 
I just think this is some weird scheme from your dysfunctional family, that's all. I stared at him in disbelief. Was he actually implying my family had fabricated this baby drama? Now convinced of his deception, I decided it was time to uncover evidence. Over the next few days, I cautiously observed Bennett's actions. He frequently locked himself in his home office, guarding his computer screen from view. Multiple questionable withdrawals appeared in our bank statements, always in the hundreds of dollars range. Strangest of all, he began taking phone calls in secrecy, speaking in hushed tones. My worst suspicions seemed to be confirmed. My model husband was definitely hiding something, and I was done biting my tongue. After his third suspicious late-night phone conversation that week, I confronted him in our bedroom. This time I let all pretenses drop. Are you having an affair? I asked bluntly. Bennett gaped. What? Where is this coming from? Oh, I don't know. Maybe all the shady bank withdrawals, the locked computer screen, furtive late-night calls? My voice dripped with sarcasm. Trapped, Bennett grasped for excuses. It's... it's work, okay? I'm dealing with a stressful client. Don't lie to me, I shouted. What do you take me for? Who have you been speaking with? Cornered, Bennett finally snapped. Fine. It's Corrine. We've been seeing each other for months now. She's carrying my baby. His confession knocked the breath from my lungs. The room spun as the weight of his betrayal sunk in. Get out, I whispered, trembling with fury. Without another word, he grabbed a duffel bag and left. Meanwhile, I sank to my knees, gutted by grief for the death of my marriage. But underneath the pain bubbled a growing resolve. This was far from over. I would make him pay for every deceitful transgression. Bennett had sparked a hunger for revenge inside me. And I aimed to fully satisfy that craving, no matter what destruction it left in its wake. In the painful days following Bennett's betrayal, I oscillated between outrage and anguish. When my sister Julia came over to check on me, I unleashed all the fury and heartbreak I had bottled up. I gave that deceitful pig the best years of my life, I raged. And he threw it all away for some cheap affair. Julia shook her head in disgust. Alara, you were always too good for him. What a spineless coward. Not just a coward, a criminal mastermind, I replied. I showed her the bank statements riddled with inexplicable withdrawals. He's been funneling money and who knows what else behind my back this whole time. Julia scrutinized the statements, eyes narrowing. Have you spoken with the bank about this? Not yet. I wanted to do some more digging first. An idea sparked. Actually, Julia, could you call the bank and inquire about recent account activity? Don't disclose our relations. Just say you are a customer care representative following up on potential fraud. Julia raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Clever approach, sis. Consider it done. As Julia got to work, I decided to search Bennett's home office. Rifling through the room yielded a trove of clues, scraps with an unfamiliar woman's number, hotel receipts, time stamped during Bennett's supposed business trips, shopping bags suggesting the affair had progressed to gift purchases. One receipt in particular made my blood run cold. It was from a boutique children's store for a $300 crystal baby rattle engraved with Amelia. The fake baby from Dalton's shocking accusation. This proved Bennett was involved in that cruel scheme to frame me. Another chilling discovery, receipt from an upscale jeweler for a diamond tennis bracelet with an inscription saying to Corinne, all my love. The other woman's name. So the betrayal ran deeper than I realized. He had promised this secret mistress not only a child but a future together. Overwhelmed with mounting evidence of Bennett's duplicity, I sank to the floor and broke down in tears. How could I have shared my life and bed with such a stranger? In that moment of despair, I heard Julia's stunned gasp behind me. She had entered silently, fresh intel in hand, but it barely registered through the pain of my shattered illusion of Bennett. Alara, Julia whispered. The bank confirmed the withdrawals were transferred to an unknown offshore account, and customers matching Bennett and this Corinne woman's profiles made huge cash withdrawals over the past few months. Her words sliced through my sorrow. I slowly rose to my feet, resolve stealing. This ends now, I declared coldly. I want everything that Snake ever took from me restored with interest. Julia nodded. We'll destroy him, Alara. In court and the court of public opinion, I'm here for whatever you need. Her solidarity meant everything in that agonizing time. With my sister by my side, I marched ahead, 
directly into confrontation with the two people who had ruptured my reality. Yes, vengeance waited on the horizon. But first I needed to meet the woman who had upended my life at Bennett's behest. She was an unseen adversary thus far. Tomorrow I would come face to face with Corinne at last. The damage was already done, but I refused to let her fade into the shadows without claiming a piece of my wrath. Hell hath no fury like the public destruction of two secret lovers. I would ensure both paid the ultimate price for their callous selfishness. Starting now. The next morning I sat parked outside the address listed on the receipts, Corinne's home. Confronting the woman who helped destroy my marriage wouldn't undo the damage, but I needed to look my husband's mistress in the eyes. I knocked sharply, simmering rage just under the surface. Moments later, the door swung open. Can I help ye? Corinne started politely before recognition flashed across her face. She paled. You must be Ilara. Must be quite the shock seeing the wife of the man you've been screwing, I replied coldly. Corinne flinched. I think you should leave. She moved to close the door, but I jammed my foot in the gap. Not until you explain yourself. Just then, a baby's cries rang out from inside the house. Corinne looked stricken. The proof cooed loudly, just a room away. Red-hot fury propelled me through the doorway. Get out! You can't barge in here, Corinne shouted. I stormed toward the nursery, taking in the custom-decorated space stocked with plush toys. Rage simmered as I spotted the crystal rattle amongst other lavish baby accessories. Bennett had set up his mistress quite comfortably while draining my accounts. Corinne planted herself between me and the crib. Please, you're upsetting her, she begged, fretfully jiggling the howling newborn. Seeing the baby punctured my anger momentarily, she was an innocent in this mess. I took a deep breath. I didn't come here to harm Amelia. I just want, need, answers. Corinne searched my face warily, finding no malice towards her daughter. She nodded slowly. Okay, let's talk. Over tea a short while later, Corinne filled in the missing pieces. She had met Bennett at, at an office networking event a year ago. He hid his marriage while promising her a future together. Bennett said so many times he was going to leave you, she insisted tearfully. He swore we'd be a real family once the divorce was finalized. Hearing Corinne echo the falsehoods and excuses Bennett had fed me sparked a realization. We were both his victims. Yes, Corinne knowingly engaged in an affair with a married man. But how could she reject Bennett's ardent efforts when she believed me already rejected? She had been manipulated just the same. I saw now we were two women pitted against each other by a master deceiver. United, however, we could reclaim the dignity he had robbed from us both. You were wrong to get involved with my husband, I said frankly, but the blame lies with Bennett for weaving this tangled web. Corinne looked relieved I wasn't threatening retribution any more. You didn't deserve how he deceived you either. I'm so sorry. She hesitated before adding quietly, Can you ever forgive me? I considered her plea. She was no innocent, but she had been seduced by Bennett's poisonous words like me, and I could use an ally against the man who had shattered us both. We both need to move forward from Bennett's lies, if only for our own sakes, I finally replied. I'm willing to forgive if you'll help me build a case exposing his duplicity. Anything, Corinne agreed fervently. Seeing you so strong facing him down, I don't want that coward getting away with this either. A wary partnership emerged between us then, two scorned women aligning to reclaim what was ours. Bennett wouldn't know what hit him. The evidence against my philandering husband had been damning already. But with Corinne's testimony of his financial malfeasance, he wouldn't stand a chance. Hell truly had no fury compared to two lied-to ladies teaming against a Casanova manipulator. Bennett would finally face the consequences of his callous machinations, and Corinne and I would ensure he felt the pain and destruction he had cruelly unleashed on our lives tenfold. Over the next week, Corinne and I gathered evidence exposing the depth of Bennett's lies. He had spun an elaborate web indeed, one that implicating my own sister Julia as his accomplice. The story emerged slowly as Corinne and I followed paper trails and connected timelines. Bennett had leaned on Julia's connections at the bank where she worked to funnel money discreetly. When withdrawals raised red flags, Julia helped cover his tracks in exchange for a cut of the siphoned cash. 
Meanwhile, Bennett wove stories to Corinne about me refusing him a divorce while convincing me his frequent business travel was work-related. The night all the pieces fell into place, Corinne and I sat dumbstruck, gobsmacked by the extent of Bennett's machinations. He had masterfully played us all, his unknowing wife, trusting mistress, and own sister-in-law. I knew your husband was selfish, but sociopathic is more accurate, Corinne noted. He destroyed so many lives without blinking. That's how narcissists operate, leave wrecked relationships and distrust in their wake, I replied wearily, headache building. Corinne nodded slowly before asking the question we couldn't ignore. So where do we go from here? Bennett and Julia have fleeced all of us blind. Red-hot anger reignited in my chest, fueling my hunger for justice. We expose them, publicly. A slow smile spread across Corinne's face as my plan took shape. I want everything stripped away, career, credibility, dignity, I continued viciously. We leak all the evidence to his partners and the local paper. Once the board and clients knows he's a lying thief, he'll be professionally ruined. And socially exiled once our circle discovers his affairs and manipulation, Corrine added, eyes blazing. In that moment, a nuclear revenge plot coalesced. Bennett wouldn't just lose his career and reputation— he would lose his freedom once I brought fraud charges. An arrogant Julia would finally see consequences, too, instead of a raise for her troubles. Soon Corinne and I hashed the finishing touches, steadied by shared righteous anger. The decisive confrontation came on Saturday at my in-law's 40th anniversary party. All the key players would be present as Corinne and I prepared to detonate the truth atom bomb. My body thrummed with adrenaline as we entered my former home now occupied by Bennett and, evidently, Julia, too. Time to rip their web of lies to shreds. I clinked a knife against my champagne glass, capturing the room's attention. As all eyes turned our way, Corinne and I moved to the front, arms loaded with printouts. Thank you all for coming to celebrate this milestone with our family, I began smoothly. Before we toast, I have a special slideshow commemorating the honored couple, with a focus on truth and reconciliation. Murmurs rippled through the room. Bennett paled, realization dawning. You see, the past year has revealed certain flaws in relationships, integrity, and trust, I continued. But the truth always reveals itself eventually. With that, I pressed play, launching the downfall of not just my cheating scoundrel husband, but all his enablers. Sometimes revenge is a dish best served as a multimedia presentation. The room watched in stunned horror as sordid secrets of the darling couple emerged alongside financial crimes implicating Julia. Finally, the monsters wore their villainy openly instead of hiding behind polite facades. Tonight, justice got served indeed, ice cold just like their hearts. A heavy silence descended on the room as the slideshow ended. Shocked faces stared back at me, my own parents stricken with betrayal. I kept my gaze locked on Bennett and Julia defiantly waiting for their response. They had spun a web of deception that was now unraveled before the whole family, time to reap what they sowed. Bennett moved first, stepping forward with hands raised in placation. Everyone, please just stay calm. I'm sure we can explain this misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? I interrupted sharply. Is that what you call draining private accounts to fund your mistress and love child? Mouths dropped open and scandalized gasps echoed. Bennett paled under the weight of judgment, settling over the room. Beside him, Julia jumped to his defense. Alara, how could you embarrass our family like this? You're clearly distraught and not thinking straight. I bristled at her patronizing tone, as if I was some hysterical housewife instead of the orchestrator of their downfall. Oh, I'm thinking perfectly clear thanks to having my rose-colored glasses ripped off, I retorted. The proof is all there in black and white. Or do you deny helping your brother-in-law funnel stolen money offshore, dear sister-in-law? Julia's eyes blazed, but she held her tongue, caught. The rest of my family stared, betrayal and disgust hardening their expressions. Meanwhile, Corinne stepped forward, my unlikely ally in this quest for justice. I think you all deserve to hear the truth directly from the victim here. Yes, Bennett promised me a life and family, letting me believe I was his one and only— her voice broke as she gestured to where my ashen-faced parents stood. While he robbed their daughter blind. How could you? My mother finally choked out at Bennett, tearful. My father just shook his head. Grim disappointment etched across his face. 
finally confronted with irreversible evidence, Bennett crumbled. I'm sorry, I just wanted more than I had and things spiraled out of control. He turned pleading eyes on me. Alara, we can still fix this. But I silenced him with a scathing glare. The damage is done. Did you think you could just take and take without consequences? I let icy disgust fill my tone. Well, now the whole family sees your true colors. I want you out of my home and my life for good. A heavy quiet followed my pronouncement before my father stepped forward. You heard my daughter. I want you off my property immediately. He turned his glare on Julia, too. Both of you. Their web of lies dissolved fully then. Bennett begged and argued, but my family turned their backs, repulsed by his greed and callousness. Meanwhile, Julia stormed out silently, knowing she was equally scorned. I watched them go with relief and strange hollowness. The quest for revenge had consumed me, driving me relentlessly once the truth emerged. Now seeing justice served, I wondered what came next. But meeting Corinne's grateful eyes across the room reminded me of one certainty. Whatever future awaited wouldn't include deception or betrayals. We women had reclaimed our dignity and broken free. In the weeks following the climactic showdown, the consequences for Bennett and Julia's deceit cascaded quickly. My parents insisted Bennett sign over our shared assets and properties to ensure I retained what was rightfully mine. Through the humiliation and anger, I think Bennett almost felt relief relinquishing his web of lies. But freedom came at a steep price, including his career. Once word spread of the financial schemes and affairs exposed at the anniversary party, Bennett's partners unanimously voted to oust him. As further evidence emerged he had embezzled company funds, his reputation lay in tatters. No firm in town would touch him now, despite his frantic attempts to minimize the damage. Meanwhile, Julia faced her own share of fallout. The bank fired her for gross ethical violations. Our parents made clear she was never welcome in their home again after so callously plundering their own daughter's accounts. Her fiancé broke off their engagement, unwilling to marry someone so mercenary. Watching the ripple effects of their disgrace, I oscillated between satisfaction and sadness. I had needed to reveal the ugly truth, if only to regain my own power and agency after being manipulated and violated. But seeing my sister cut off from the family she had betrayed stirred an ache of grief I couldn't ignore. In my lowest moments, I saw how the quest for revenge had also splintered my own relationships and emotional foundations. I may have regained material and legal standing, but bitterness gnawed inside nonetheless. My saving grace became Corinne and little Amelia. Having sister survivors made even the most desolate days bearable. During playdates, Corinne affirmed over and over that coming forward had been worth the pain and judgment we endured. Bennett deserved facing consequences rather than quietly moving on to his next scheme emboldened. Watching Amelia babble and try to roll over, I had to agree. There was relief in ripping the mask off deceivers rather than allowing them to slowly poison relationships from behind an innocent facade. Still, when Bennett showed up at my doorstep one rainy Tuesday, desperation carved into his face, old emotions churned again. Alara, please have mercy, he implored, suit bedraggled and filthy. I can't manage the payments ordered in the settlement. You'll still get the money if you just give me time. Gazing at this pitiful, broken man soaked by the rain, I remembered late nights filled with laughter and intimacy from another lifetime. Back when I thought I knew Bennett's heart simply because he showed me his body. What a naive fool. Should have considered that before you decided to lie and cheat your way through our marriage, I said bluntly, contempt thickening my voice. I'll expect every last penny paid. The court date won't change. I moved to close the door, but Bennett jammed his foot in desperately. Please, have some compassion. His voice broke, pathetic. You loved me once. Manipulation still, attempting to appeal to tenderness he hadn't earned. My eyes hardened to stone. The man I loved never really existed. Send any future requests to my lawyer. The door clicked decisively. I caught a glimpse of Bennett's crestfallen face as I turned away without hesitation. The time for mercy had expired— I owed that deceiver nothing now, including sympathy. Finally forced to reckon with bleak reality alone, perhaps Bennett would emerge enlightened rather than eternally scheming out of greed and cowardice. If not, at least he now faced concrete consequences rather than leeching endlessly enabled. 
Either way, I could hold my head high, knowing the tangled web unraveling my life had finally been cut loose. The long walk towards trust and peace stretched ahead, but at least now I strode unencumbered by poisonous treachery masquerading as love. In the year following the implosion of my marriage, I slowly pieced my life back together while watching Bennett's continue unraveling. Having the truth exposed seemed to break something in my former husband, destroying the polished veneer hiding his corruption. He spiraled into depression and isolation as former friends and partners turned their backs. Last I heard, he planned to leave the state to escape the cloud of shame and failure. Meanwhile, I focused my energy on rebuilding a home with my kids and discovering new purpose in life. Going back to work full-time at the nonprofit I had left gave me a renewed sense of self-worth, using my skills to better my community. My sister Julia reached out just once in that year, a few months after our parents permanently exiled her from family gatherings. In a brief, stilted phone conversation, she apologized for betraying me while defending her actions as desperation rather than malice. I accepted her apology calmly. Julia would always view herself more as a victim of circumstance than accountable for her own choices. Nothing would change that tendency towards self-preservation at the cost of relationships. Nonetheless, saying goodbye to the sister I had once trusted and confided in stirred sorrow I couldn't deny. I focused instead on bonding with Corinne, who proved family extends far beyond blood relatives. On the anniversary of the spectacular implosion, Corinne brought over a bottle of wine and compassionate ear. We talked late into the night, revisiting the roller coaster revelations that upended our realities. Do you regret how everything played out? Corinne asked gently, catching my pensive gaze at one point. I considered before shaking my head slowly. I regret ever trusting manipulators disguised as loved ones, I admitted. But going through the fire has shown me my own strength. Corinne nodded, queasing my hand in solidarity. You have so much courage, Alara. Don't ever doubt that. Her words soothed my soul and those painful memories flooded back. I had emerged wiser, recognizing the power I held as my own best champion. Later that night after Corinne headed home, I tucked my slumbering children and pulled out my journal. I wrote candidly about grappling with the lasting wounds from deception and betrayals while acknowledging the growth taking root. My marriage may have been ruptured beyond repair, but I was stitching the broken pieces of myself into someone even stronger. Rather than bitterness or cynicism, now hope blossomed, hope for wisdom in discerning trust, rebuilding bonds, and renewing my own spirit. As I blew out the solitary candle flickering on my nightstand, I sensed a turning point passing. The last year held necessary devastations, crushing facades and false personas I had clung to but on the other side lay freedom to embrace truth and authenticity, surrounding myself with people of integrity rather than simple charm or shared history. The vows and family I once built my entire existence around had disintegrated. But in their absence arose a woman who answered only to her own inner voice. Scars marked my journey through the rubble, yet they represented healing, too. With my eyes wide open to both human cruelty and courage, I could finally see the long road ahead clearly and I intended to walk forward steadily, unflinching, no more tangled webs stretching out to trip me, only horizons shining bright with promise. The long night behind me, I stepped into dawn.